Uh, welcome parents, partners, and most importantly, students. Uh, we are so excited to be here tonight to celebrate your phenomenal work. Uh, this is an incredibly talented and dedicated group of young scientists. I want to express my deepest respect and appreciation for the Mass Life Sciences Center. Uh, we're here today because of their vision and support. They made it possible to teach students biotechnology lab skills, professional skills, and the content necessary to be successful in the life sciences industry. Uh, every time that I walk around the Apprenticeship Challenge and I see the devotion that the kids have, uh, we, we claim that this was going to be two and a half hours a day, three, three days after school. But as you've walked around and talked to the students and those of you who are parents know what time your children are getting home, you know, that dedication extended well beyond two and a half hours. Uh, and that entire time, I see a nodding head. Uh, every, every time I walked around the Apprenticeship Challenge, I just kept thinking to myself and commenting to anyone that would listen, I kept saying, this is exactly what education should look like. It was really an amazing experience. Uh, students are learning the science that they will be able to practice in a world-class institution in the summer that's on the cutting edge of science and they're going to have paid internships as a result. So we're very, very excited for them. Uh, students have already secured uh, internships at some companies. Others have pledged that they're going to take some of our students as interns and haven't selected yet. Uh, these are Mass Biologics, the Forsyth Institute, RAS Labs, Unicus Pharmaceuticals, Massasoit Community College, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Pressure Biosciences, and Stonehill College. And we thank you so much for, for hosting our students. Uh, absolutely. You are, you are creating life-defining moments and opportunities for these students, and we could not thank you enough. Um, I'm confident that the students that come to you have, are very, very well prepared, and both you and the students are going to have amazing experiences together. Uh, there are a couple of people that I'd like to, to thank that really this couldn't have happened without them. Um, first and foremost, uh, Ryan Mudvar. Um, absolutely. I refer to Ryan as the patron saint of our biotechnology program. <laughs> Um, and Beth, thank you so much. Um, and a huge number of faculty have created this uh, and made this what it was. Um, so you'll hear from Dr. Dave Mangus uh, later tonight, and uh, Lori Jackson, Dr. Lori Jackson Grusby, uh, as well as uh, Suzanne Heenan, Meredith Nussbaum, um, Melissa Kelly, Joyce Voris, Anne Marie. Um, Sorry, Anne-Marie. Butler, thank you. <laughs> uh, so tonight we're going to hear from a few of those who made this possible. We're going to hear from Dr. Travis McCready from the Mass Life Sciences Center, uh, Dr. David Mangus from Brockton High School, uh, Shayla Gomes, a student in the program, and Secretary Acosta from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development. Uh, after the presentation of the certificates, I'll, I would invite you to take a tour of our biotechnology labs that were also made possible by the Mass Life Sciences Center. So, uh, so I want to introduce to you Travis McCready. Uh, Travis is the president and CEO of the Mass Life Sciences Center. This is a billion dollar public-private partnership with the mission of advancing the life sciences ecosystem in Massachusetts. He directs and oversees the center's investment strategy, including the agency's operations, programs, and partnerships. Previously, Mr. McCready, Dr. McCready served as the vice president for programs at the Boston Foundation, directing the foundation's grants and community investment strategy to benefit the people of greater Boston. He was the first executive director of the Kendall Square Association, responsible for growing the innovation economy of Kendall Square one of the Commonwealth's most economically robust districts. He's held the COO and CFO positions at the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority, overseeing the operations and finances for three convention centers in Massachusetts. A native of Brooklyn, 
Dr. McCready began his career as a public school teacher in the Bronx. Uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. McCready serves on the trustee boards of the American Repertory Theater in Cambridge, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the Conservation Law Foundation and WBUR, and the New England Advisory Council for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. He served on the Economic Development Planning Council under two governors, including co-chairing the Subcommittee on Innovation and Entrepreneurship. He currently serves on the Massachusetts Digital Healthcare Council and the Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative. In 2017, he was named one of Boston's 50 most powerful people by the Boston Business Journal. Dr. McCready is a frequent speaker on economic development strategy as it relates to the convergence of private, public, and not-for-profit profit interests. And his blog, Life Sciences Discourses, has been recognized by the Boston Globe. Uh, Dr. McCready received his BA from Yale and his JD from the University of Iowa. So without further ado, Dr. McCready. Apologies to whoever comes after me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, what I'm about to say is, is kind of rare, uh, but I am actually speechless. Um, you, the students, have, uh, have uh, put me in a very reflective mood this evening. Um, I am blown away uh, by uh, just the, the few minutes I had an opportunity to spend with you. Um, I'm blown away by your enthusiasm and your passion uh, for science. Uh, and I'm blown away uh, by uh, what you've accomplished and what you are on track to accomplish uh, in this world. Um, to, put, to, put, to put in perspective the skills that you've been able to capture um, in a short period of time. Let me tell you what I did today. Um, I spent uh, the, major the majority of the afternoon at a company uh, in Cambridge called All Nylum. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. Um, a publicly traded uh, bio uh, biopharma firm, uh, almost 2,000 employees here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, they have figured out a way uh, to cure a, uh, a disease called uh, amyloidosis. Uh, amyloidosis is the result of a single gene, um, a single gene uh, having a defect um, that causes it to make a protein that folds over on itself. Um, once this amyloid pr uh, protein form, uh, folds over it on itself, it starts to aggregate in organs within the body uh, and ultimately leads to not only just uh, pain and debilitation, but ultimately um, to, uh, to death. Um, this is a, a, a company that I've, I've known well um, and is a very emotional company for me uh, because my father-in-law died from amyloidosis 18 years ago. So I'm sitting here uh, with this company uh, as they are about to launch uh, this product into the market on August 11 um, uh, over the summer uh, that will significantly improve the lives of individuals that have amyloidosis. Uh, 18 years after my father-in-law uh, passed away. Uh, the skills that uh, we were in, the actual drug that we were talking about today, uh, and the skills that made that drug possible today um, are precisely the skills that you were talking about um, over here. This same exact skills. The same. What you've entered into is an opportunity to change the course of human history. And I say that without any hyperbole whatsoever. What you've committed to through this program, and parents, I know they spend a lot of time, more time than, <laughs> maybe more time than you want them to. I know they spend a lot of time on this, but what they've entered into is an opportunity to change the course of human history. Your kids, that's what they're about to do. And it is for that reason that we are so proud, we are so excited, we cannot wait to see what you're going to accomplish. Yes, spend the time, spend more time. Uh, spend as much time as you want and what you need because this is the moment. You are at the, the moment, the apex of science right now. And you've decided, you've chosen to walk the path 
that will enable us to accomplish great things. Only 10% of the rare diseases that exist in, in, the, in the world have cures or therapies that are designed to treat them. Only 10%. You have an opportunity to address the remaining 90. We are so proud of you. Parents, thank you for giving them, giving us your children. Um, they're, they're great kids. Um, thank you for allowing us to work on their behalf. Um, Ryan, Beth, um, and all the MLSC staff here. This is the third year for you. Uh, uh, for, this is the third year we've run this program. Every year we've expanded it from city to city. We started out in Boston, Cambridge. Last year we moved to Worcester. Um, and this year we're in Brockton. Hopefully next year uh, uh, the uh, legislature will, uh, will give us the funding and the capacity to be able to extend this uh, to other families and other children uh, in Lowell, Springfield, and other cities around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, because we believe it is our commitment and it is our duty to be able to provide these opportunities to all our kids, regardless of where they live, regardless of the zip code, regardless of their upbringing, their background, or economics, or anything. We believe that it is our opportunity and our responsibility to bring this program to all of our kids. Um, to you teachers, uh, thank you for d delivering the content, uh, the great content, and for being dedicated uh, to, uh, to our kids. And please, uh, Stay in touch with us. I know I already told a uh, told, told bunch of you. Um, stay in touch with us over the summer. Uh, hit us on social media. Uh, send us pictures. Send us emails. Uh, this, it is these type of uh, communications that we need to be able to continue to deliver these programs uh, in years going forward into the future. So again, thank you. Congratulations. And I look forward to hearing and seeing great th things from you going forward in the future. Um, Doctor, let me introduce you to Dr. Mengus. Um, for those of you who don't know him, uh, most of you in the, in the room probably do. Uh, Dr. Mengus leads the four-year non-vocational biotechnology program here at Brockton High School. The vision of this program is to improve access for Brockton students to high-quality, engaging, and relevant STEM curriculum that will prepare them for the demands of the 21st century. In its sixth year, the program now serves more than 370 students. In this program, students explore fundamental concepts in biology using an engineering perspective. That's genetic engineering, synthetic biology, and biomimicry. Each course includes lab activities that engage students with authentic research questions, thus allowing them to explore key concepts in ways that make those concepts transparent, quantifiable, and understandable. To facilitate their research, Students use modern equipment, including a UV fluorescent spectrophotometer, a luminometer, a real-time qPCR machine. With generous funding from outside agencies like the Mass Life Sciences Center, Brockton High School is among the first schools in the nation to utilize these technologies in the classroom. In 2016, Dr. Mangus received the National Association of Biology Teachers Ron Mardigian Biotechnology Teaching Award and was named the Hall of Patriot Place presented by Raytheon, Massachusetts STEM Teacher of the Year. Uh, Dr. Mangus received his bachelor's degree from Ohio Wesleyan University and his doctorate in molecular and cellular and developmental biology from Indiana University. He spent 18 years first as a postdoctoral fellow and then as a research assistant professor at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, researching post-transcriptional aspects of gene expression medi mediated by poly A binding protein. Dr. Mengus. Good evening. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, this project, this, this apprenticeship program, really was a, a love affair for me. Um, to be able to take um, the science that I did so many years um, as a scientist, as a postdoctoral fellow, then as a research professor, and to put that in a classroom and give a future generation of scientists the opportunity to do laboratories like that um, is really something that's very dear to my heart. Um, when we designed, when the teachers and I designed this program, we wanted to make sure that it was an authentic 
research program. The idea was to figure out some way that they could learn all of their skills that they would need to work in a modern molecular biology laboratory and do that in a way that would be relevant um, for their learning. And we chose for those students to work on purifying an enzyme called luciferase. This is that enzyme that's in the abdomen of the fireflies that um, causes them to light up and produce that bright light that we see on so many wonderful summer evenings. In the science laboratory, um, scientists use that as a way to monitor gene expression. And so they use that as a reporter to monitor things that are going on either in a cell or in a test tube. And so the challenge that we placed before the students was to first clone that gene, to then express it in E. coli cells, and then to purify that protein. And so that satisfies all of the steps of a traditional biotech um, drug development pathway. And so we were so excited last week when the students were able to run their protein gels and do their luciferase assays and see that not only did they have enzyme activity, but that they had purified protein and that they successfully accomplished both our and their learning goals. Um, I am going to let um, Shayla tell you a little bit more about the project. Um, but I am so very proud of all of the things that they have done um, in the laboratory. Um, as um, several people have alluded to, um, I have a difficulty um, planning and budgeting time. When, when the students um, heard me tell them that it was 5 o'clock, uh, it was um, unusual because many of these students are programmed to change class whenever they hear a bell or whenever they hear the class is over. These students, when I t would tell them it was 5 o'clock or if it was 4.30 on a Friday, didn't move. They kept working, understanding that science doesn't always revolve around the, their schedules or the clock. And they worked diligently to complete their, their projects and assays um, because they understood the value of the learning that they were doing. And so kudos to, to them, and thank you, parents, for your patience. Uh, as Dave mentioned, one of our students, Shayla Gomes, is going to share her experiences in this program. Uh, Shayla is one of our spectacular apprentices. She's a hard worker with an incredible level of determination that drives her towards success. She's regularly on the high honor roll, earned summa cum laude on the National Latin Exam, a member of the National Honor Society and the Foreign Language Honor Society. She's also a choreographer, a cheerleader, a member of the Junior Executive Committee, among so many phenomenal traits, we celebrate her passion for science and her collaboration with others. Okay. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shayla Gomes, and I've been asked to share a little bit about my experience in the Apprenticeship Challenge. Um, as this program concludes, I feel as though I've learned a lot of things and skills that I've gained in my experience along the way. Walking into this, I had very little knowledge of experiments that had to do with measurements so precise as though a mi micro pipette was used. Pretty much every experiment we did called for using one, so it was important that I got really good at using them. In addition, we learned many other things like how to make solutions, perform PCR, transform bacteria, and purify, um, purify proteins. Beyond the technical skills, this program also improved my social skills. Being in a setting where it's easy to ask others around you for assistance or provide aid to others made it easy to talk to others and formulate friendships. During this program, I've seen myself grow in many ways I didn't think I would do in such a short amount of time. These experiments have forced me to persevere and use critical thinking to tackle the situation at hand. Of course, not every experiment worked and we all made mistakes, but at some point I felt discouraged. But Dr. Mangus, Dr. J, and many other staff always helped and encouraged us to move forward. Overall, this program has been a great experience, and I am looking forward to an internship this summer. 
I particularly I particularly want to thank the Massachusetts Life Science Center for sponsoring this program and facilitating our career exploration, exploration in the life sciences. Uh, as, as Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development in Massachusetts, Secretary Acosta leverages her passion to make the world a better place for the next generation, to ensure that workers, employers, and the unemployed have the tools and training needed to succeed in the Massachusetts economy. Prior to joining the Baker Polito administration, Secretary Acosta spent over 30 years in the banking industry and is known for her ability to drive positive performance outcomes aligned with the company's mission. She's been named one of Boston's most influential women from the Har Women of Harvard Club, El Planeta's Top 100 Most Influential Hispanics in Massachusetts, and Get Connected's 100 Most Influential People of Color in Boston, to name a few. Involved in many civic and community endeavors, Secretary Acosta is a recognized leader, public speaker, and cultural ambassador on matters of diversity, motivating youth, and Latino leadership. The common strands that run through her life and career are leadership, mentorship, passion, and success. Her work in her previous roles as board member of the Boston Foundation, board overseer at the Boston Children's Hospital, where she was a founding member of Milagros Para Niños. Did I get that right? Okay, thank you. And corporate advisory board member for the Boston chapter of the Association of Latino Professionals for America has touched the lives of many. In addition to her nonprofit work, Secretary Acosta was a director and planning member of the Merrimack Valley Workforce Investment Board and was appointed a Northern Essex Community College trustee by Governor Baker. Born in Cuba, she earned a Bachelor of Arts from Wesleyan University in Connecticut, where she was a member of the women's varsity ice hockey team. She's a proud mother of five children. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was hoping you, you got the short version of the bio, but you didn't. Um, so. I know it's late and it's rainy and it's threatening out there and it's dark, but in here it's so bright. And uh, I am so excited to be here and so excited to have been invited. Um, I think my my bio just says that I have five children, and you know when you're a parent, that's like the most important thing in your life. And uh, and obviously, I want to give them all of the wonderful experiences that you're giving uh, your children. Parents, if you can raise your hand, guardians, who did you, who, someone that you're sponsoring here today? Thank you for all you're doing. It's not easy to be a parent these days, and uh, and I really want to thank you for supporting your kids. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's a different world out there. Uh, fortunately, we are in a great economy. We are an economy right now uh, that you you kids are graduating into. You young adults are graduating into this wonderful economy. Um, Massachusetts is strong. It's stable. The unemployment rate is very low. But we also have to be careful not to think about unemployment as being uh, as even throughout the state, because we know in cities like Brockton and Lawrence uh, and Holyoke and Springfield, the unemployment rate is almost double uh, or triple at times of what it is in other parts of the state. So we have to work hard to get that right. And I'm thrilled to be partnered with Travis in this mission. Um, life sciences is critically important to our economy here in Massachusetts. You are living in the hub of the best life sciences companies in the world. And if you are interested in this area, you are going to have a soaring career. Uh, the fact that you even took time out of your high school life when you could have been doing something else, hanging out with your friends, just you know, watching Netflix, whatever. Uh, you're here with these wonderful teachers. By the way, Dr. Magnus is wearing a red lab coat. I think it should be a red cape. He's a superhero. <laughs> um, but you're here and you've chosen to stay in school after. You've chosen to come nine hours more, 10 hours more a week to school to accomplish this 
experiment that has been put in front of you, that alone it puts you so ahead of the game. One of the thing I hear, one of the things I hear from employers all the time is, "Look, we'll teach them how to do stuff, but they got to learn how to do the other things, like the soft skills. Like, what does that mean? What that means is we need them to learn how to work in teams." We need them to look us in the eyes when we're talking to them. We need them to shake our hands firmly when we put our hand out. We need them to show up on time. We need them to show up. <laughs> so these are the things that you've already learned and will continue to learn because of this wonderful partnership that you have here with your school. And now many of you are going to go on to internships this summer. Do you know that that experience alone is going to increase your salaries over your lifetime by about 22% just because you've you you you're getting a head start you're getting a head start you're graduating with something that many 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 of your colleagues are not graduating with that's experience with a world class company that's pretty amazing so pinch yourself every once in a while Realize that the opportunity that is before you that you have volunteered for, no one forced you to. Be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the back on this, but understand that you are off to a great start. And look, at the end of the day, if you love it, continue with it. If you don't love it, I challenge you to tell me you didn't learn something from it. So even if it's not your choice, you have learned so much from just having had this experience. So give yourself permission to think openly about what you want to do next. And if this is it, think big and think bold because the world is your oyster. If this is not it, that's okay. Don't punish yourself for having chosen this. Give yourself permission to say, maybe not this, maybe something else, but recognize what you've learned. And then in closing, just do me a favor. Tell your friends that were kind of maybe joking around with you saying, you're going to stay in school. What? Tell them that you had a great experience. Tell your friends that maybe they should join you in this quest or they should join you next year doing something like this. It's called paying it forward. And I hope this is not the first time you hear anyone say that to you. It's really important once you've gotten a great experience that you tell others around you, tell your friends make sure you pass it on because we have got to do better in Massachusetts. And what Travis says, I want to underscore when he said, tweet us, let us know about your experiences because we need your help to tell our legislators and the administrators about your experience so that we can keep doing this year after year after year for more and more kids in the Commonwealth so that one day our Massachusetts company look like what I'm seeing right here in the audience. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, at this point, we'd like to move to the part of the program where we can present the certificates to the students. Uh, we'll do that with the help of Dr. Jackson Grosby, uh, who has just as long a bio as everyone else, and I won't embarrass you by reading it. <laughs> oh, you, you have them. All right, when I call your name, would you please come up and receive your certificate? Esther Adegoke. Malou Andrade. <laughs> Alexander Boucher, Jr. <laughs> Anne Celestin. Vindo Shisha <laughs> Oh
Omareji Inabahare. Jillian Frechette. Tracy Freire. Aliyah Gomes. Shayla Gomes. Tian Hun. Annika Lutz. Jovina Montero. Marianne Musemi. Victor Wabike. Uverland Ozeris. Shafa Petit Frere. Emily Porciello. Brittany Soros Ramos. Miladi Tio Najara. Stevenson Tran. Brandon Ubesia. Armando Vieira. And Rick Shang Zeng. and Angela Girardier. As a mentor. So we'd like to thank Angela for being a mentor to all of the students in the program along with the faculty. Congratulations to all of you students. Congratulations to families. Thank you to everyone who supported this program, who continues to support this type of work as we move into the future. Thank you. Um, we will have a lab tour at, um, in a few moments if anyone would like to, to follow that. Um, but please have a bite to eat. Please mingle. Thank you. <laughs>